what makes him so dangerous. So your organization uh, has filed, not just in Michigan, but you have filed to get some pro-insurrection congressional candidates off the ballot, including Marjorie Taylor Greene. You haven't been successful yet. Do you think that this is a shot across the bow? Do you think that this may uh, be a chilling effect on insurrectionists? What do you think is the impact of trying and losing thus far in your attempts to knock insurrectionists off the ballot? Well, let me be clear about, for example, what the Michigan court uh, just did the other day. Uh, the Michigan court said it did not say, rather, that Donald Trump didn't engage in insurrection. It did not say that the 14th Amendment doesn't apply to him. It did not say that Michigan or other states can't decide whether he is disqualified under the 14th Amendment. All the Michigan court said was that we need to refile that challenge after the primary. And that's similar to what happened in Minnesota. And this is something that voting rights lawyers are very used to. Uh, courts telling you that either you're filing too soon or too late. Uh, in this case, we erred on the on the side of, of filing uh, early before the primary. Now the Michigan court is saying that we have to refile after the primary. But of course, by the time that happens, we have challenges in other states pending right now before the Oregon Supreme Court, and we will be filing more. So uh, like an investor who spreads his bets, uh, we have uh, not put all of our eggs in one basket. And although the, the Michigan court uh, got it wrong by saying that the uh, challenge can't be filed before the primary, uh, we can return to Michigan after the primary and we'll be ready to refile. Ron, I want to ask you sort of a larger philosophical question. I think you're probably the perfect person to answer this. For years, 